buttery, sweet, crisp, flaky, rich, all words that I would use to describe Queen Yaman, which is the decadent pastry from the French region of Brittany. Now it is a decadent dessert and the name actually means butter cake in Breton, which is the Celtic language that's spoken in the area. Now you don't have to book your flight just yet though because Lon's here and she's gonna show us a fantastic version that we can make at home. Bridget, I just love this pastry. You've described it with some of my favorite words <laughs> and I just can't wait to get started. All right. We're gonna start by making a lean dough. It's got just a handful of ingredients and it's really easy. Okay. I'm using 11 and a quarter ounces, that's two and a quarter cups if you don't have a scale, of all-purpose flour. And I've just got it in my stand mixer bowl. I'm adding three quarters of a teaspoon of table salt and a half a teaspoon of instant yeast. Just gonna stir that together. And I've got one cup of room temperature water. That's it. That's it. Yeah, real simple. I am stirring this up rather than sticking this on the machine right away. So I'll put this on the stand mixer and I'm gonna mix it on low for one minute and I'm looking for everything to come together and for all of that dry flour to get worked in. Great. Now that the dough has come together, I'm gonna turn this up to medium low and we'll let that run until the dough becomes smooth and elastic. That usually takes about five minutes. Bridget, this looks great. It's been five minutes, that dough has come together nicely. Let's get it out of the bowl. Ooh. This is looking like it's gonna stick to that counter, so I'm gonna <laughs> throw a little flour down. We're gonna round this out and kinda squish it into about a five by five square. This looks great. I've got a greased plate here. I'm just gonna transfer it to the plate. Throw some plastic wrap on top. Now that this is covered, I'm going to let it rest in the fridge and it can sit there for one hour or up to 24 hours. All right, Bridget, now that the dough is in the fridge, let's move on to the butter. All right. We're gonna shape our butter into a packet with the help of this little parchment sheet. Hmm. I've folded it into a six by nine inch rectangle. I'm just gonna open it up. Okay. You do have instructions for how to fold that on our website. We do, yes. I've got my stand mixer bowl from earlier. I'm adding 16 tablespoons of salted butter. This is a half a teaspoon of table salt. It tempers that sweetness a little yes. bit, makes it more interesting. Here we're kind of moving away from what the traditional method is. You'll see why in a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna add our sugar directly to the butter. This is three quarters of a cup of sugar. For now, let's get this together. I'm gonna mix this on low for about a minute. I'm just looking for everything to be well combined. This looks great. Now, I'm gonna transfer all of this to our little packet. So let's push this down a little bit, fold it over. I'm just gonna press this down until it's about a half inch thick. That looks pretty good. Now we'll refold this. And then you send it in a letter to me. <laughs> I mean, the post office will deliver anything if I put a stamp on it, right? <laughs> Great. Just want to make sure it's nice and rectangular. And I'll use a rolling pin to smooth the butter into the corners and make a nice flat butter packet. This is looking nice and smooth, nice and squared off. I'm going to get this into the fridge as well so it can firm up. And that's going to take about 45 minutes, but you can also do this ahead and have it in the fridge up to 24 hours. Bridget, it's time to get that butter and lean dough together. I've got a nine inch round here and I've greased it well, both on the bottom and the sides. And the grease isn't there to facilitate release. It's actually there to hold our parchment in place. Okay. And it's the parchment that's gonna help us get this pastry out of the pan. I'm gonna press this into the bottom of the pan and then I'm gonna pleat it so that the bits that are sticking up are stuck to the sides. Okay, great. This looks great. Parchment's not in the way. That's all I'm looking for. Okay, so great. Let's move this to the side. Now, I have had this butter on the counter so it can warm up slightly from fridge temp. And this I've actually just removed from the freezer. I want them to have the same malleability so that when I press them with the pin, they move in the same way. It helps them come together hmm. better. Okay. Um, and it's just 10 minutes in the freezer, really simple. Get rid of this plastic, flour my counter. And I'm not worried about working too much flour into this little bit for the top. And I'm gonna roll this out until it measures 18 by six and a half, keeping the short side parallel to me. Okay. Great. Lovely. 
Now, butter packet. This is going right in the center. Peel this off. Mm. Now we'll just fold this over to encase our butter. If it springs back or you missed the mark and it's a little short, it's okay to give it a little stretch. That looks pretty good. And I'll just pinch these seams closed across the center and down the sides. While I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I don't have a ton of air in there. Air is going to puff when we bake this, and we don't want that. We want nice, compact, flaky layers. Right. We want to control the puff. Yes. Making sure that my pastry is nicely floured on the bottom so it doesn't stick. Now, I need to roll this out until it hits 21 inches by 7. A little bit wider than 7 is okay. Butter's still kind of firm. It's not going to roll too easily. A nice way to help is pressing gently, working my way down the pastry. It thins out the butter and makes it a little bit easier to roll. So I'll go down and then across. Now the traditional method for this pastry is to just scatter sugar over that butter, but sugar's coarse and mm. it can tear the dough. It also pulls water out of the dough, which turns into a syrup and that oozes out the side, makes a hot mess, and we do not want that. We're a little bit wider than seven, but that's okay. Now, before I fold this over, I'm gonna brush off any extra flour from the top. The flour on the top will keep these layers separate. And again, we want those layers to be nice and tight so that they can absorb all that butter instead of puffing away from it. Compact. Yes. So I'll fold the top over, quick brush. And this is just a simple tri-fold. Go. We're rolling it to 21 by seven. We're gonna do two trifolds in total. That's enough to create plenty of layers for this. I'm gonna use that pressing motion one more time. So this looks great. Brush, fold. Okay, that is it for our folds. Lovely. Next, we have to make this into a round. Oh, spoke too soon. <laughs> I'm gonna roll this into an 11 inch square. I just wanna flatten those layers together a little bit, set myself up for making that round. This is kind of my favorite part of this. We're gonna take the corners and we're gonna fold them into the center. You don't have to be super precise about this. And this gets us close to our round. Now, the best part, we're just gonna squish it. Oh, okay. Right, so I'm gonna come in from the sides and kind of just yes. mush it in mush it this way and now we'll flip it over come on right a little bit more flour tuck the corners and gonna give it a little nudge right now i'm going to roll it out one last time into a nine and a half inch round and then we'll get it in the pan okay great that's pretty close so just pick it up slide it in place lovely here we go now that it's in the pan, just one last bit before we bake. Okay. I've got a tablespoon of milk here. I'm just gonna brush it onto this pastry. This milk is just gonna help the pastry bake up a little bit more golden. Mm. And we'll score a decorative pattern in here. You can kind of put as many or as few as you want in here. Gorgeous. Last up, I've got a tablespoon of sugar right on top. And it's just gonna add a nice little crunch. Finally. I'm actually gonna dock this pastry. I'm gonna create little vents all the way down to the bottom. I'm putting in about four of them. It's gonna allow air that is inevitably trapped between those layers to escape. It'll help the pastry layers stay flat and soak up all the butter that's in there. Because we want pastry to soak up butter and sugar. Always. Yes. This is gonna go on the middle rack of a 375 degree oven. It'll bake until it's deep golden brown. That takes 50 minutes, maybe an hour. At America's Test Kitchen, recipe development is serious business. Head over to americastestkitchen.com and unlock 14,000 expert developed recipes and 8,000 unbiased product reviews, all rigorously tested by our team. Access every episode of every season of your favorite cooking shows. That's 38 seasons of inspiration. And with the ATK Members app, you'll have 30 years of expertise at your fingertips anywhere, anytime. Join us and become a smarter cook. Start your free all-access trial membership at americastestkitchen.com today. Mm. How great does this look? Mm, gorgeous. 
<laughs> oh, as great as this looks, it needs a little bit of time in the pan. That pastry has to cool a little bit. Oh. It'll firm up. It's really soft right now, actually. Okay, so how long? 10 minutes. <laughs> That's not too bad. 10 minutes are up, Lon. <laughs> <laughs> Set a timer, I see. So I'm going to invert it onto a plate. Mm. Heard it. Hear the drop. Yeah, always a good sign. And I shall lick the parchment. Right. The reveal. Mm. Mm. Delish. You can see it still needs a little bit of setting up. Gorgeous. The smell of the caramelized butter oh. is outrageous right now. It's so good. Now, I'm going to be serving it on this board, and it okay. can go right on our serving board. Just flip it over. Lovely. Oh. And... <sighs> You know how you talked about crisp? Yes. We gotta wait 30 minutes for crisp. I will wait for crisp. Listen to that. Now, this is supposed to serve eight to 10, but I cut us bigger pieces. <laughs> eight to 10? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my goodness. Good grief. I just want to take a moment and marvel at that striation in there. It's just beautiful. All those layers in there held together with butter and sugar, creating the most ultimate of syrups in the world. Oh, the best. They're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. Mm. <laughs> I love everything about this. The texture is unmistakable. You get that hearty wheat flavor, but it's so delicate at the same time. There are little pockets of water where it gets bound with the sugar, mm. and there's like a jellyish syrup. It's delicious. This is the ultimate yeah. of French pastry. You know what's scary? I can polish off a half of this, no problem, and I have. You have? <laughs> yeah. Well, before I polish off the rest of this, I got a little business to do, so thank you, Lon, for making this beautiful pastry. You're gonna wanna make this and it starts with beating sugar directly into the butter before rolling it in a parchment envelope. Roll out the dough just enough so it can encase the butter block and dock the pastry to prevent spots of dry dough or too much lift. From America's Test Kitchen and the coast of Brittany, Breton Queen Yaman. Queen Yaman, <laughs> yum. Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed making it. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you're ready to take your cooking to the next level, head over to americastestkitchen.com and get a free all access trial membership. While you're there, you can sign up for our free email newsletters and download our app. With unlimited access to over 14,000 of our Test Kitchen recipes, and 8,000 product reviews, you'll have everything you need to cook and learn. So I ask, what are you waiting for? <laughs> Let's make something great together.